Hi all, my name's Ollie and this is Simply Stitchy and in today's video we're going to be looking at this little gadget. We're going to be finding out what it is, what it does, do you actually need one and why it's technically not really a sewing machine. That's a lot of questions to answer so let's get into it. Leather lockers have been around since the 1880s. Um, a company called the Merrow Machine Company, based in Connecticut, actually introduced an overlock stitch back in 1881, which they followed up in 1889 with an overlock machine that was able to do that stitch. Although they have been part of commercial sewing pretty much since then all the way through to present day, they haven't really been part of domestic sewing. Way back in 1965, a couple of in sewing machine engineers um, decided that they wanted to change that. They wanted to bring the power of the overlocker into the home sewing world. But overlockers back then were a little bit big and cumbersome. So what they decided that they'd do is they'd take the overlocker's design and shrink it down into a little baby version. And that's where the company got their name from. Baby lock. Now, although they introduced their model back in the 60s, the 60s and 70s weren't that good a time for overlockers or sergers um, because they were incredibly fiddly and complicated to use. They didn't really gain popularity until the 80s and through the 90s when Baby Lock once again brought out some groundbreaking features that would make using an overlocker a lot easier. In 1993 Baby Lock revolutionised the home sewing overlockers by introducing air threading. Now if any of you out there have ever tried to thread one of the older overlockers you'll know just how complicated they can be. Air threading it's just a breeze. They followed up that revolutionary movement with yet another breakthrough in 1997 when they introduced the automatic thread delivery system on the Baby Lock Imagine. Now you remember at the start of the video I said that overlockers aren't really sewing machines and they're not. The Mero Machine Company were, were actually a knitting mill and they invented the overlock device to do an overlock stitch on knitted fabrics to hold them together just that little bit easier. And if you take a look at the threads as the overlocker knits you'll see that rather than being an interlock stitch of two threads like on a sewing machine or even a chain stitch it's a series of little loops just like knitting. Now if we have a look on the inside of the machine for a moment oh, these little loops are created by an upper looper and a lower looper so technically this gadget is a knitting machine. And that's not the only difference between an overlocker or a serger and a sewing machine. Overlockers tend to have quite a number of threads. This is a four thread overlocker. You can get two thread overlockers, you can get three thread overlockers, you can even get five thread overlockers. And basically with this one with four threads I can change it so that it works with either two threads or three th threads. And you'll notice that it's got a tension disc per thread. And another difference between a serger is it is capable of doing something that a sewing machine just can't do. You can run them threaded without any fabric and they won't jam. In fact that's how you start off stitching with an overlocker. Before you even get your fabric anywhere near your foot you get it stitching first so that you can get a little tail. And here's the row of overlocked stitches that are literally a row of little loops. Something else that an overlocker can do that a sewing machine can't As it sews it chops the fabric off so it doesn't matter if you don't have a straight edge for your seam you don't even have to leave a large seam allowance 
That's pretty much the main use of an overlocker. It trims and binds the edge all in one go. Although you can do other things with it. Um, you can do pin tucks on some overlockers. Um, you can do gathering on overlockers. You can even um, turn the blade off so that you can do rolled hems. The process of binding an edge and trimming a bit off is known as surging and that's probably one of the reasons why this little gadget has got more than one name. I carried out a poll on my community tab recently where I asked people if they could let me know what term they use to refer to this. Is it a serger? Is it an overlocker? Or is it something completely different? Now before we get into the results of that poll I think I should point out that it was a poll of people who actively watch this channel, 50% of whom are based in the US. It's no surprise then that 50% of people who watch this channel call this gadget a serger. 33% of people, like me, call it an overlocker and 17% call it something completely different. Ginger Catney from Northern Ireland, hey, he got in touch to let me know that his aunt, who was a seamstress, used to call hers a triple binder. And there are actually other terms that you could use um, to describe it. You can call it an overedge machine or a marrow machine. In fact, sometimes overlocking or surging is called overedging or marrowing. Now, if you're like me, you're probably wondering why this little gadget has got so many different names. Now, I've come up with a few possible reasons. The first reason is the way people interpret words in different ways across the globe. To me, I'm from the UK and the word surge means something happening really quickly. Um, it's something that the sea does in the middle of a storm or it's something that happens when your house gets hit by lightning and you get a sudden surge of power that knocks your power out. It could also be a manufacturer who wanted their gadget to stand out above everybody else's similar gadget so they called it by a different name but the one reason that I came up with that probably has more credence to either of those two is there's a fabric called serge and it's actually a woolen twill or a worsted woolen fabric that used to be used a lot in military uniforms now as I've already said the overlockers were originally used in commercial settings and it would have been a commercial setting that would have made military uniforms so maybe the term serger or surging is harking back to the days when overlockers were only used in an industrial setting at the end of the day it doesn't really matter what you call them what's in a name after all a serger by any other name He's still going to use an overlocking stitch to bind your seams. So what are the advantages or reasons why you need an overlocker or serger? Well, one of the main ones is the fact that it gives you a professional finish to your seams um, and it neatens the edges. It also makes sewing knits a lot easier because it copes with the stretch of the material so much better than a sewing machine would. Overlockers have got a differential feed which means that they can reduce the likelihood that you'll get wavy seams and how it works let me just turn this around a minute an overlocker has actually got two sets of feed dogs they've got some at the back and some at the front and what the differential feed will do is it will speed the feed dogs up at the front of the machine to take the top layer through quicker than the bottom layer they do have quite a few bad points though um, the poor old overlocker serger has got a bit of a reputation of being difficult to use. They're incredibly fiddly to thread. They come with a large learning curve, if you like. You, you need to know what to set your differential feed on to, to get just the right speed to cut down on your wavy seams. You need to know what tension each of these should be set on to give you a perfect overlocked stitch. The one thing that you do have to watch with sergers is a lot of home sewists have a habit with their sewing machines of sewing over pins. If you bring that habit to 
to your overlocker and you sew over pins, that blade is going to hit that pin and you are going to cause some severe damage to your overlocker. You're also going to have bits of flying metal flying all over the place, which is never a good idea. So far we've covered why an overlocker is called a serger, their advantages, their disadvantages. The next thing that we need to look at is, do you actually need one? I've owned this one for quite some time now and this is the first time in, it's got to be over 10 years, that the poor little thing has actually been in the same place as me. It has spent the best part of the last 10 years sitting in a box in a storage unit. Now one of the main reasons that I don't tend to use it that often is because I just don't have the space. The overlocker serger can't do everything. It can't take the place of a regular sewing machine, which means if you're sewing with it, you need to be able to set the overlocker and the sewing machine up at the same time. Now, what I need to do when I'm sewing is either use grandma that side of me here who's already set up or actually find a place to put my sewing machine to use it because I don't have a dedicated sewing area. To swap over then to the overlocker means putting the sewing machine away, setting the overlocker up, doing what I need to do on the overlocker, moving the overlocker away and getting the sewing machine back out and I just find that a bit too much of a faff really. It's different if you've got a dedicated area where you can have your sewing machine set up and the overlocker set up and then it's just a simple case of flipping from one to the other but if you have to rebuild your sewing area every time then it can get old real quick. When you consider that a regular domestic sewing machine can pretty much do all of the functions and more than an overlocker can do it makes more sense to me to just use a sewing machine. I mean the only thing that it can't do is it can't trim the edges and you can't run it without any fabric in but how many times do you want to do that anyway? Now whether you get an overlocker or not really depends on the type of sewing you do. If you do a lot of sewing on knitted or stretch fabrics then you probably might find that it, it would be beneficial to your sewing. If you do a lot of quilting however you might not find a, a serger that much of a good investment. Although you can use a serger to sew your different quilt blocks together. You can't actually use it to do um, free motion quilting for instance. There are quite a few overlockers on the market at the moment and I found out a few that are good entry level models that will introduce you to the world of overlocking without actually breaking the bank. The first one is this one. Weirdly enough Janome still make the Janome 634D. Here it is. Next up we've got the Brother DZ1234. Well how about the Juki? This one's the M080CB and we couldn't really do a video without mentioning Singer. Singer actually do an overlocker. It's the Singer Professional. It's got quite a long name. It's the 14T968DC. Now all of those were Amazon links because I'm an Amazon affiliate. The links don't cost you anything to use them, you only pay for the price of the item. But I do get a little bit of a referral fee if you do use those links and I do appreciate it. These next two links are actually sewingmachineplus.com links. I'm an affiliate for them as well. The links work in exactly the same way. You don't get charged any extra for using them. But it does help me out and it helps support the channel and I do appreciate it. The first one is the Brother 1034D. We couldn't really have a video on overlockers without having one from Babylock. This one is the Babylock Vibrant. Any one of those machines will give you a great introduction to the world of overlocking and you're bound to find one there with the features, the functions and the price that's best for you and your situation. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And why not consider subscribing to my channel and clicking that little bell just down there it, below for you. The next couple of videos that I'll be uploading are staying with the overlocking theme. I've got one on how to clean oil 
and sew with your overlocker and I'll also be doing a video on how you can sew knits with a regular sewing machine. So if you want to see either of those, subscribe, click the bell. I appreciate it. Why not also check out some of the other videos that I've already got loaded on my channel using these links here or the videos that I've got linked in the description box. Whichever one you go and check out next, I hope to see you here for the next video. In the meantime, whatever you're saying, whatever you're saying it with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.